What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Strike Team Games. Today, we're going to be playing a little bit of Undead Blocks. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've recorded some of my gameplay, and I'm going to go ahead and put this up while I give you my thoughts generally about the game, the company, what the future may hold, my personal opinions. But pretty much, if you've ever played Call of Duty Zombies before, you're going to be familiar with Undead Blocks. They're following the same type of model to hopefully be able to build a, product, a more polished product and be able to iterate that on into the future. But obviously, competing against Call of Duty, um, even for the largest AAA studios, is going to be difficult. So this is where the niche comes in involved. Using Play to Earn, which is a feature that the development team at Wagyu Games has decided to push forward with very adamantly, um, it could lead the way to make undead blocks become more unique to be able to stand out in the market for itself. They've already raised 1.7 million a seed round, a small seed round with Animoca Brands, and they're on the IMX Layer 2 scaling solution for Ethereum. Most of their gen Genesis uh, NFTs are on the Ethereum blockchain, and don't worry, we'll get into it, but for the most part, as I was playing through this game that you're watching right now, I was frankly impressed with how a company that's only been around for a year plus has been able to make a polished little mini game. Um, one level zo of zombies where you're obviously killing, spending your uh, experience to open doors, to purchase new guns, to purchase perks, following the same model as, as Call of Duty Zombies. I've been, I was really impressed about how good it feels. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot more to be added and there's a lot of things that you can see need improvement. Some things like movements or reloading or you know, the action button at certain times. Uh, multiplayer would be another one. But of course, they're in the process of working on it. Um, another thing, as I started to do my research, was that I noticed that the white paper has actually been changed. This may be a good thing or a bad thing. It really depends on your perspective. But from my end, I really do believe that crypto games and projects in the Web3 ecosystem need to be very flexible, which means you need to change your white paper as things like new regulations, as new business models, as new gameplay, gameplay features come, come out. So I'm not too worried about it. But what I went ahead and I did was I went ahead and I focused on reading the Medium articles, listening to the AMAs from the developers, going through the Discord, obviously looking at the website. So I've done my homework. And I'm frankly, like I said, impressed, especially with the gameplay part of it. But for those of you that haven't played, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what you can expect. In, within the next month, by the end of February, the game will be launching its, its play-to-earn system. It's going to be in the beta phase and will be tweaked. However, the general gameplay is that through RNG, as you're slaying zombies, certain zombies will drop certain loot boxes that will contain different types of currency, in-game currencies. There are standard Z-Bucks that pretty much are the infinite token digital currency of the game, virtual currency of the game. You're going to use that to upgrade your weapons, to buy cosmetics, Pretty much it's a representation of the amount of time that you put into the game um, so that it can help you with the progression aspect of the game. Now, the earning aspect of the game is going to come through what are called Z, uh, gold Z-Bucks. These gold Z-Bucks are pretty much, and here's what's intriguing, going to be pegged to 10 cents per gold Z-Buck. Now, the developers are doing this obviously on purpose. And they're, they're doing it in a unique way by managing a treasury fund for the reward system of the game that they will then be, be adding to based on the amount of revenue that they're able to generate. Of course, you know, when we were going through the free-to-play era, many big wigs in, in large corporations were saying, you can't give away your free. You have to be, uh, give your game away for free. You have to be able to monetize it. So they shunned it off. And look what happened. Now we're talking about Web3 games, and when you make the argument about, wait a minute, you're going to take a portion of your revenue to give back to your players? Like, how are you going to make that succeed? Well, the idea here, if a, an economy is able to be created that's stable, where they're able to manage how much is, being, is coming into the game through a stable 10 cent currency, and how much obviously is being extracted, then really what we're talking about is as the game grows, as it earns more revenue, either through sponsorships or through tournaments, or through free-to-play players buying cosmetics, 
they would be able, I, uh, theoretically, to use that a portion of that revenue to fund the player base. The idea is that the value of the overall network of the company, of the, of the brand, would be a combination of what the players are able to earn plus what the developers are able to earn. And working as a team should, again, theoretically, create a much bigger valuation in terms of the tokens and the NFTs than simply by gating it behind a paywall or gating it behind a centralized organization that only reaps the benefits of the rewards. Is this something that is likely to happen? We're gonna have to see. They're willing to take the shot. And they've even, they're wanting to double down on play to earn by even putting in a rental system, a scholarship system that will allow you to obviously rent your items so that other people can go ahead and grind for that currency that could then be split, okay? Interesting things to note here is that the, at the time of the beta, there, we're expecting at least one, one mode, a solo mode where you're playing through just as I am here now. Obviously the team is working on multiplayer, both duos, up to four players. Um, but there are issues, at least at this point in time, with development. So it's going to take them more time to roll that out. So I think what you can expect from what I've listened to in the AMAs is two different types of modes uh, for this single-player uh, portion of, uh, of the campaign. The first would be the free-to-play, where players are earning those standard V-Bucks and using them to upgrade and buy cosmetics. The second one will be only for the owners of NFT weapons. Now, there's multiple sets, the Apocalypse set and the Genesis set. The Genesis set really has uh, an added feature of being able to get you into in, in exclusive content, whether that's tournaments or other sponsored events um, that only those Genesis, Genesis owners will be able to participate in. Whereas in anyone else, anyone that owns either a Genesis or the Apocalypse weapon sets will be able to participate in the earning. There, if you own one of those NFTs or if you rent one of those NFTs, you'll be able to then Take your chances with the RNG by getting loot drops when you kill these zombies. Obviously, the more, ideally, the more you rank up, the, har the more you level up in terms of rounds, the more likely they are to drop. However, the developer is going to be scaling it back because they're going to have a much more hands-on approach to the economy by controlling, again, the inflows and the outflows. So what does this mean? What are the things that you need to pay attention to as a, a player slash investor? Okay, well, there's three organizations here that are all helping make this thing come alive. Really, four when you take into consideration the platform. And going with the platform, we have IMX and the scaling solution. IMX has got done a great job of uh, fundraising over the past year and is launching some of the biggest games in Web3 Gaming. So I could say they're easily right up there with Polygon as one of the leaders pushing it forward. Great news. The other three organizations are more managerial in nature. The first one is the company Wagyu Games that's, that owns Undead Blocks. Now, they're you know, a roughly five to 10 people, uh, and they're mostly financial in background. You know, man, they come from a background of Goldman Sachs and also of managing large, large funds, which you can see may play in a role in this case by managing an in-game treasury. They are, as a organization team, handling mm -hmm. the operations and really contracting out the development team. Now, this is a partnership with a Ukraine-based uh, development team that is helping actually build the game. They're the ones that are building the game. Now, because of the war that's going on right now, there's been some delays, and Wagyu Games has said that they're wanting to shift the development uh, out of Ukraine and into Vietnam. So we would expect that there could be some you know, there could be some positives and negatives with that. Obviously, being able to rely on the team that is in a, a not going through the course of a war right now is one aspect. The other one is that it will take time for to onboard a new team. Maybe it's already occurred, maybe it hasn't, but you would want that transition to happen smoothly and for it to continue on into the future. Third thing that you should know, uh, the, the third company is the company that's going to be hosting the renting system. Now, this is a company that's called Blue Mint. And from everything I've able to look, look at right now, they're very, very early stage. Just a few people, maybe five, um, and they really are barely getting started. The website you know, doesn't even have an About Us section yet, but I was able to get into their Discord, read through very little bit. Um, you know, They all come from a background of, of schooling, schooling Columbia. Maybe this is something they can pull off, maybe it's not, but 
Um, the fact that it is on the IMX platform means that perhaps third parties, players like you and me or other organizations, could develop the systems that are needed for renting uh, to be able to allow the player base to interact with. This is possible, and I've seen this happen with other types of games, such as Gods Unchained that's also on IMX. So those are the three major companies, and the platform would be the fourth to keep a note of. There's pros and cons uh, for, for each one. But I would say that some of the unique things that, the, that the, those at Wagyu Games um, have put forward is they wanted to focus on multiplayer, multi-chain. They wanted to be skill agnostic, platform agnostic, and chain agnostic. Okay, These are some of their guiding principles. The fact that it's multi-chain is something that's been in my mind for a long time. What does a multi-chain Web3 game look like? Is there going to be positives or negatives to that? We don't know. The idea here that being able uh, of, a, of a multiverse that can span multiple blockchains, you know, le is my leading idea. But we're going to have to ha see how it all plays out. Um, they are wanting to aim, at based off the after their after their launch, three million dollars of revenue in the first game. When I hear that as a as a CPA, you know, that's a company that's getting right off the ground. That is, uh, you know, barely at the going uh, going concern stage, and is really the the launch pad. They've also talked about wanting to uh, iterate on the game by, and already have discussed even a second game, really with the idea of using what they've built in Unity at this point to create different either game modes or different games entirely, um, but using the same system. This gives me the impression of a, of a business or an organization that really needs to cut their teeth in, uh, in terms of what they're able to put out to the public they may be searching right now to, for a product that is, you know, a minimum viable uh, product to, to reach the to reach players, and that's going to be probably their their number one issue. Are they able to to get the amount of attention that they need to onboard enough players to kickstart the revenue of the company, um, and to be able then to also uh, increase the amount of rewards that the game is able to to dish out to players. Obviously, this is going to have to, we're going to have to see how it plays out. They're wanting to focus on mobile, which is unique because this is where you start to see the mixing of Web 2 mentality and Web 3 mentality. From a business perspective, I would expect that the Web 2 mentality is probably going to generate the most revenue. You know, if they're able to put out a, 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 this, this game to a mobile audience that would then go ahead and spend on loot boxes or cosmetics, you can see how that is the, the, the spark of the engine that funds everything to move forward and get grow bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, there are also discussions about how the, your in-game items, your NFT specifically, would carry over from this game to the second game. And for this point, it, it gets a little more difficult on my end. I start to think about you know the economic decisions you make from game one. It could dramatically uh, hold you back on what you want to do for game two since you've already set that precedent. But being that they're wanting to get more work out to the public, this m this may be a short-term issue with a much larger idea into the future. That larger idea may be the rebranding of their token. Right now, they've launched the Undead token, which really is a government's token for the game to help you know, vote on some of the very minor aspects of the game, but they're wanting to actually switch that into a studio token, something kind of like what Gala Games is starting to attempt to pull off. What intrigues me is that a studio token at a very low valuation um, and with a company with a financial background that is, at least at this point, been able to contract out successfully to create a small you know, alpha beta type project may be something to look forward to into the future. Obviously not financial advice, but something for you to do your own homework on. There are plenty of other questions that come up as I'm going through the game, and I don't know exactly how they're going to play out, but I'm interested, hopefully, in speaking to a member of the development team in the future uh, as I continue to cover the game, especially after launch of the earning system. Some of these things are, what are their short-term goals and time frame? Not really is like, when is the game going to be out? But more like, you know, what are they expecting to do by the end of year one, year two, year three? What would they deem to be a success? Obviously, while keeping as much flexibility as they can to adjust as new regulations come out or as the crypto market changes. You know, no, another item as well, going back to the crypto market, is that since we're in a bear market right now, the amount of players that are in the ecosystem has been reduced. 
you know, how do they expect that to affect the game going into the future? Or is it more about a focusing on just the Web2 side of it, focusing on mobile users to help generate the revenue to keep the company going? These are some of the things that are in my mind, the complexity of launching on iOS um, with advertising or cloud gaming with server issues that are currently there right now. Who knows? We're gonna have to see you know, more as we get more information when the white paper hopefully launches or with new tournaments uh, that come out into the future. But I'm gonna be here to cover some of them as the game moves forward and look forward to hopefully speaking to a member uh, either of the game or of the development in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed my coverage of Undead Blocks at this point. Look forward to more in the future. I'll catch you later. Peace.